here I am, here I am, doing this video live. Getting everything set up. Look hard again. All right. Ooh, that's interesting. All right, so, um, we're going to try something a little different. I've got my computer set up so that I can hopefully see comments a little better from anybody um, who comes and joins me while it is live. And for those who join me after it's live, I'll try to get back to your comments as soon as possible. Um, I don't uh, check this particular email account terribly often, so if it takes me a while or I miss things, I do apologize. Anyway. Uh, what you see here is my Severin cardigan. We're working on the shawl collar, which is this upper portion right here. And before I get started, just a little, hey, what's going on? Um, so, first of all, let's pull the needles out. I don't want to accidentally. So, here you go. This is the top of the, the yoke right here. And the body, and the body, and the body, and the bottom. Hold on another set of needles. So, um... I've made the initial edging, which is this um, sort of rib, I'm trying to think of what it's called, slip stitched mock rib, which is this. And then I'm doing the short row collar shaping, which means I'm working from the back neck on the left to the right, back and forth, back and forth. And that's built up this fabric. And as you can see here, What's built up is very small, and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as it goes along. Um, and that's just because that's how short rows work. And the short rows purpose is just to build up a amount of fabric in a specific area without building up fabric in the whole entire um, section. So it wouldn't be all the edging, it's just this part of the edging. Um, and a shawl collar is just an extra long collar. It's usually folded over. Um, and this is the cartridge rib. So uh, a little more before I get into this. This cartridge rib has given me so many problems uh, because I had a lot of confusion about how it was formed and I could see from the pictures and the pattern how it was supposed to look and how it had these two columns of knitting and my first one had these columns going slanted. Just I, I don't even understand how I did that. Like, that is just beyond me. Um, and I didn't write down all of my mistakes because they were mistakes and so I just undid them. Um, the next go around had half of it right. So this is a column of knit two right here and here. And the cool thing about this is it's on the other side too, right? So it's, it's uh, reversible. Well, uh, that column was only one. And I, I knew it was looking wrong and I was hoping that maybe I was imagining something. And so I worked to about twice this width um, wrong and it was, it was not fun. So here I am again. Um, I did some troubleshooting. I asked for help. I sought out knitters who were familiar, more familiar with sweater knitting than I was. I contacted the designer. I contacted other people who made the sweater because, um, Spoiler alert, there's just one simple instruction that's missing um, that I just wasn't getting, personally, and uh, that is what led all, all of the mistake. Now, the good thing is I know how to read my knitting, and I knew from the pictures what it looked like, and I knew that what I had didn't look like the pictures, and I could see some of what was going on. Um, it was difficult to read some of them some of the pick some of the stitches but I knew there was a knit two column and I knew that there was it was flanked on either side by some garter stitch which is that bubbly stitch there and um, I was misinterpreting what this divot was and that divot is the knit two on the other side so I finally sorted it out um, tested some things of how to fix it and there we go so it took me a minute but yeah now I have made this shawl collar, um, I did seven or nine reads in, had to frog it all the way back. Um, got all the way up to about 24, 26 rows, frogged it all the way back. I'm hanging out at about 14 or so, um, and yeah. So, 
that's that's where we are that's what's going on and there you go and i just wanted to give you a little hey heads up what's going on so my tips for this um this uses some wrap and turns okay so a wrap and turn is just a type of stitch and the stitch is this one right here so you see it's been wrapped and that is just one way to form short rows there are other ways to form short rows but this is just one particular way and what I've done is I've got this little um, it's called a knitter safety pin but you know we can be less fancy and just call it what it is it's a damn stitch marker so I decided that for the pearls it would be purple and for the knits it would be green um, just so it would kind of help me remember visually which stitch was which and I wouldn't get confused but this stitch isn't worked it is um, slipped from the left needle which you're looking at it backwards by the way so it slipped from the left needle to the right then this working strand right here is wrapped around it and it slipped back to the left and that's why it's called wrap and then once you do that you turn the work around so that's the whole explanation of it and don't worry if that doesn't make any sense I'm gonna do a wrap and turn from you so you'll be able to see it but um yeah so colored stitch markers are your friend as you can see I've got one here this is red so red is for the right side and I've got green because um, I didn't have any lavender, right? So there you go. Um, and yeah, so I am about, I would say I'm about 85% done with this sweater. Uh, the collar and this edging, the rest of the edging and the sleeves are all that's done left. The sleeves, right? But I've got them on some uh, waist yard. <laughs> so then I get to bind off weave in all of these little uh, doodads and then that's it yeah so um gosh I don't think I have anything else I wanted to say so without further ado let's do some knitting or let's watch some knitting right I'm gonna get my timer going oh my goodness And I will try to address questions as I see them on the screen. I'm doing a little different setup than I normally do. Um, so bear with me in my awkwardness. It's also super late. I don't know how many rows I'm going to do. Uh, probably two, at least. They don't take terribly long. But I want you to see a knit wrap and turn and a pearl wrap and turn, which will require two uh, repetitions. Yeah. And so I've got two needles going on right now makes these guys a little flimsy and all over the place. So yeah, that is I actually need to do a video on this technique of how I knit. Um, I've had some people watch me knit and just be like, what? How do you do that? And I'm just like, uh, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I just, this is just how I knit. The reality is, I didn't always used to knit like this. Um, brownie points to whoever gets the weird thing that I'm doing. But I didn't always used to knit like this. And I found that knitting like this helps me knit faster. And it was really, it was really a natural progression in how I was knitting. If you're not a knitter, I don't expect you to get it, so it's okay.
Knitting like this is still a little weird for me, like, uh, and by like this, I mean on camera. Because I'm not used to holding my work this far from my face. I'm nearsighted. Fun fact. And so I naturally just hold my work super close to my face. Which I didn't realize was a thing, actually, for a really long time. I just kept moving things closer, or moving closer to things. And it was kind of funny, because someone's like, oh, yeah, that's because you can't see it far away. And I'm like, what? Oh. Okay, eye doctor person. Now I've got uh, Shake It Out playing in my head, because the little the partner and I watched Sing yesterday. And I've got Rosita. Final performance playing in my head. It's really weird. Something that's not in my notes, but learning to read it, your knitting is super helpful because when you can see what you did by looking at the fabric, it helps you recognize when you make mistakes and figure out what you need to do instead of what you did. Now, sometimes with things like reverse stocking nets, um, which is what this is right here in the middle. Or this is also reverse stocking net, right? That's what that looks like. Um, versus garter stitch, which is just what this little ridge is right there. Sometimes that stuff is hard to see. Um, I know I have a hard time seeing it. But knowing the difference between a pearl, right, and a knit will do wonders for your knitting knowing when you've dropped a stitch or you've worked into a stitch multiple times or you haven't decreased or you have decreased um, is super helpful. And those are basic enough that they're easier to see. And anybody who's watching who does a sweater, um, these markers well, are not necessarily supposed to be here. Some of the extra ones are not intended to be there for the pattern. But because this is a removable marker and all I have to do is slip it off the needles, um, I'm not worried about it being there. It's helping me to make sure that I'm in the right place. So I'm leaving it. Sometimes you need to take markers off because they get in the way. So it's really good to follow the instructions, but if the marker being there isn't going to um, inhibit your ability to work the pattern, then go ahead and leave it if it makes it easier for you.
I need to do some needle felting. It's been a while since I've done that. And so here we go. We're, we're coming up to the end. I've got my green little safety pin marker. So I noticed that is the mark stitches wrapped. And you can wrap, you can mark your wrap stitches any way you want. I chose to put it behind the stitch. You could put it in front of the stitch so that it says, okay, hey, you're about to work a wrap stitch. You could actually put it, attach it to the stitch itself. It really doesn't matter as long as it stays where it needs to so that you can tell that that's what it is. Um, I tried it on this stitch and I personally did not care for it. But I've absolutely seen other people do that. So everything is really just a matter of preference. If it works, awesome. Okay, so here we go. This is the last stitch before the wrap stitch. And I know this is a wrap stitch. And because I've marked it with this green marker, I know that it's a knit stitch. And I know that this is the right side because the purl bumps are facing. And so I'm going to work this wrap stitch knit wise. I'm going to go ahead and take this marker off and set it aside because I'm going to need it in a, just a few minutes. So I know that I need to work five stitches past. So what I've been doing is taking my thumb and putting it between the stitches that I have to work and the stitches that are left. So I don't work too far and I don't have to remember if I have worked something. Look at my pattern. Okay, so... And if you get confused, here's what you do, right? I can take my finger off there and I look for my stitch that is wrapped, which is going to be this one because there's two little, two little spaces next to each other. So that's four. So I had moved my thumb, which tells me that I only have one more to do. Okay. So, and that is my fifth one. And here's how you do a wrap stitch knit wise. So with the yarn in the back, as if you were knitting, you will move the stitch over to the right needle. You will wrap the yarn forward into the front. And this is where I go ahead and put my stitch marker here. And then you will move the stitch backwards. And so you see how that thread goes around that stitch and it just gets wrapped. And then the second part of it is the turn. And so I want to make sure that the yarn is oriented in the right place, which it is, because I know I'm going to start with a knit stitch. And so the yarn is going to be back here. And I'm going to check out the pattern to see where I'm starting with. And I'm going to go keep going. And when you work this first stitch right here, a lot of times you, you want to keep this snug so it doesn't leave a hole. And you would just tug on the yarn a little bit. Just don't tug so tight that you distort the stitch or the fabric. And then I'll just take some, I'll just take some getting used to.
I'm losing count, so I'm going to go ahead and check. That is four nits. So, I know. Hmm. That is right. A lot of times when I have uh, easy, simple repetitions like this, I will either kind of mumble them to myself or I will say them in my head to just make sure that I stay on track and where I'm supposed to be.
Now here I see that I have a little bit of a mistake. So I have the opportunity because I'm at the stitch right here to go ahead and fix this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the stitch off of here and I'm going to slip that stitch out, that out of the way, and take that out, and take that out. Basically ladder down these stitches and just take out each of the ones. And then I'm going to go ahead and fix this. Because I know what it's supposed to look like and it's easy to fix. While I'm just right here. Recreating the knit stitch as it should be. And I could have left it, but I didn't want to. And so now, all of those stitches look correct. And that's the benefit of knowing how to read your work. You can catch little mistakes like that and fix them if you so desire. And it looks like we have another mistake here, so I'm going to knit two, one, and we're going to knit two, one. Okay, so get this out of the way, set this down, knit two, that one, and this, knit two, and this one. So this right here, this loop doesn't belong here like okay and what looks like happened is it was supposed to be formed here and just wasn't and that's how that happened there we go Normally when I find errors or mistakes like that, unless it's a customer order, I leave them in there um, because I'm not super worried about things being um, pristine, as it were. But when something is supposed to look a certain way, I, I like it to look like it's supposed to look. And if it's simper, simple usual, user human error, then I can fix that probably. Okay, so we're coming up to the last two stitches. I know that this is knit and this one is purled. So I'm going to first of all move this yarn to the front because that's how you purl. And I'm going to warp the wrap stitch by moving the wrap onto the needle and then over top of it and then purling. So I'm going to take that off, and I know that I need to go five stitches beyond where I am. I'll check to see if I understand the pattern I need to work in. Now the next stitch will be a purl, so I'm going to go ahead and move the yarn forward, move the stitch on the right on the left needle over to the right, move that back, my little marker there, 
and then put the wrap stitch back. And there we go. So, two bows have been completed. And I'm that much closer to the end, which this little green marker, I have to work up till I get there. So I've got a couple more rows because I'm going over six sets of stitches each. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope you enjoyed the shawl color and that you appreciate how lovely and wonderful it is. And I worked super hard to get it this way. So thank you for joining me. I'm going to go back to knitting and um, maybe watching some Netflix. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, make sure you leave me a comment here. Um, after this video is over, I'm going to go and edit the description and add a link so that you can go over and see all of the video notes over at the Patreon post, which is also shared publicly. So you can check that out. And if you like videos like this, who would like to see more, would like to see other things that I'm doing, consider becoming a patron. You can see weekly videos for as little as one dollar. Um, and then I do special monthly videos at the five dollar tier and it goes up from there. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for checking out my work and I will see you on the flip side.